So uh, you've got a pretty interesting setup for your solar. Tell us about that. Ah, okay. Hello everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're gonna to meet Grant. So I think this, uh, your solar setup here is the most unique thing I've ever seen. Tell us about <laughs> this. Uh, okay, well, I, so I bought it Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. You bought high quality, everything I got, Yeah, all really good, good quality stuff, but now I don't have to worry about it. Right. I got 610 watts of solar. I've got the Battleborn 100 amp hour lithium ion battery. Um, and it cost $800, but people say, that's a too much money for a battery. But for me to get even 50 usable amp hours of AGM battery, right, was gonna cost me $600. So I just paid the $200 extra and got 100 and all the other benefits that you get with, you know, not having to trickle charge them and all that stuff. So I'm, I'm glad I did it. Like uh, Jim in Denver said in his, his talk, you put as much on your roof as you can and put in as much batteries in your battery compartment as will fit. And can't do any more than that, so then you learn to live within that. Right. I decided to get two panels, because the panels were only $178 a piece. Wow. After your disc discount, and they don't charge tax there. You no. don't mention that a lot. They don't charge tax. I shouldn't mention that, you're right. Yeah. Um, and so the extra solar panel was the smallest part of the, the thing. Right. Um, and you can see it does stick out a little bit past here, but not past here. Um, and at first I was just going to make them both level and low. And I thought, well, I want to be able to put some stuff underneath that back one. And then I said, well, I want to put some tubs underneath the back one. And so, um, it kind of grew to, you know, about nine inches of space underneath in the back. And that's so once I get a door put on the back, then I'll be able to take all the tubs that are in the cargo box and put them up under there. This i just get this out of the way. But this amazingly fits eight of these tubs exactly. Mm -hmm. But this drags a lot. This is a, this is a lot more clearance than I normally have because the ground's rounded right here. So I want to put these tubs up there and they don't, there's almost nothing. I mean, there's, the stuff that's in it is light. It's spare clothes, winter coat, stuff like that. Right, got to have them. Yeah. And so I'll put those up there and I think I'm just going to get rid of this and just put a bike rack back here. That'd be nice. Yeah because I used to ride a bicycle a lot, and I kind of miss it. Um, so if you know anybody who's be looking for a, a cargo box and, <laughs> and a rack, that's let a good me know. One. That's a good one. <laughs> so that's why it's this like weird shape and it's extra high up there. You know, I like to have the wires neat. Right. When I was a network manager, half the problems were caused by wires not being neat. Right. But this board here is just a one by 10. Right. And it took me, couple, three days of constantly lifting that board up, taking it down, lifting it up, taking it down. Right. I wanted that line to exactly match the existing rails. Right. So these are the existing rails that came on it and they had crossbars, which I just gave away to somebody else. Um, and then these are square bottomed U-bolts right. to hold it in place. And I just, you know, drilled two holes and cut a slot with my jigsaw and- Absolutely. Yeah. To get that, you know, I had to put it up there trace it doing the you know the standard you know trace a line thing if you heard of a surform tool stanley makes them kind of a cross between a rasp and, a, and a, a plane but and then just take out the high spots and just keep taking out the high spot put it up you know mark where the high spot is take you know so that's how i got that shape um and it's yeah it's just a two by ten that i just meticulously shaping and forming and forming and shaping. I mean, there must be crossbars for structural support. There, there is. There, uh, this is the attachment for a crossbar that goes across, and you'll be able to see that if you look right. in from the back. You can see there's the, the, the crossbar that I cut, and I opened it up mostly just to cut out some weight. And this here, these stripes, are just white Gorilla tape. And that's so that all this grit that's already there doesn't just wear through the paint and have holes resting in my roof. Right, good, good thinking. Um, and then this lattice work under here is so the tubs don't go bouncing up and hit, into, the, panels. hit, the, hit the panels. And give, um, give a lot of airflow to your solar panels too. Yes, yes. I, I, some people say, why didn't you seal that off? I'm like, because they need air. They need air. Because you don't want your solar panels getting hot. Yeah, and this must be And there's one. another little crossbar under here. 
and that supports this uh, this air dam, which is just a quarter inch piece of plywood. Right. But uh, I used heavy duty uh, acrylic paint and like three coats of of it on here, so it's made for people to walk on on porches. Right. I didn't want to have to drill holes in the roof. Right. So you can't see it from there, but just behind this edge, there's this r rail in, in the rain gutter, and it's rubber. So I could take my Dremel tool and just gouge out the rubber right there, make enough of a gap between there and here, and you can see it only barely wears. But that's because I got layers of tape over it. And then it runs down underneath here, behind the little rail where, where the door slides, goes all the way down, and then dips down and then comes up. That way if the rain's running down the wire, it doesn't run in. And comes up and I cut a little slit in this foam here and it goes up and doubles back. Yeah, that'll lift. And that's how that gets into there. I see. Well, tell us what we're looking at. Okay, so this is my uh, solar electric setup. And this is the Battleborn battery here. And this is a charge controller. And these are breakers to um, either to shut off from the solar or to shut off from this going to the battery. Um, here's my inverter. Now one thing I like about the inverter is I, I put it so the switch is over there and later when I put the, the, the floor panel back in place you'll see I've got a hole in the floor panel and I can reach down through that hole and turn the inverter on and off. Oh how nice, yeah. Um, and Otherwise you'd have to pull open the, the yeah. cover every time. Yeah, so I can, I can reach my, that hole from sitting at my desk sitting here, laying in bed, and even from the front seat. This shows us the uh, just how much space is in these stow-and-go seats. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you see how much stuff, I'm, I could have brought more tools. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because this is, this is a neat, neat setup you got here. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I got this at Northern Arizona Wind and Sun, and James told, recommended that that breaker be where I can reach it all the time. So I can reach that breaker from the bed. Yeah, that's nice, that's really good. Here's that hole I was talking about, right here. Let's see, this goes in like this. And you can see I've got these slots cut in the board for the, the wires. When I first bought the thing, I was getting almost 19 miles a gallon and I knew I was supposed to be getting 24 and I tried all kinds of stuff. I changed all the, ele the electrical, I got the injectors cleaned, all kinds of stuff. Then I noticed an oil leak from one of the uh, valve covers and got my valve cover gaskets replaced. My gas mileage went up to 24 miles a gallon. The, the guy mechanic was like, I don't know, maybe you had a vacuum leak? That's all we could figure. And this, I haven't really done enough highway driving to be able to measure, but so far it doesn't seem like it's had really that much of an effect. It might probably drop me down to 22 at the worst. And I'm probably gonna start a YouTube channel called Love, Care, Think, Do, um, where I'm mostly gonna talk about, uh, well, the, the class that I gave at the RTR, which is, you know, you can build a, um, a decent, you can do a decent van build with minimal tools. I mean, I did, you can do all of what I did with a drill, a jigsaw, and some hand tools. That's it. Grant, thank you so much for sharing your home and your life with You're us. You're welcome. So, folks, I know you got some great ideas here. If you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you later. Have you seen the Cheap RV Living Teespring store? If not, you should check it out. You'll find mugs, tea.